Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, we are going to discuss a case about a 54-year-old male who came to our ER with complaints of history of high-grade fever with myalgia, chills and rigor for about, uh, which lasted for about, uh, which has been for about like 7 days. Shall we start, sir? So, yes, uh, yes. patient uh, was brought to our ER in a uh, walking state. He was brought as walking to ER. He was... Uh, uh, screened by triage and was taken to our bed. Uh, he was taken to yellow bed and uh, uh, on the initial assessment, the patient was conscious oriented and uh, was uh, talking fully. As a uh, come uh, talking oriented fully, sir. In airway wise, airway was patent as we are talking and uh, mm, there was no secretions or no uh, pulling of secretions noted. And uh, C spine was uh, most probably was normal, sir. C spine normally we address for uh, ATLS cases. Right? Yes. Once you say airway is patent, you don't need to mention that no pooling of secretions, no saliva. Mm -hmm. Airway is patent means nothing is no, there. No. That's already understood. Okay. okay. In the breathing, uh, air entry was bilaterally equal, respiratory rate of 18 per minute and saturation of 98 percent maintained in room air. You are talking about the 10 second assessment. 10 second for, okay. assessment. And in the circulation wise, uh, peripheral pulses were e equally palpable with BP of 160 over 80 mm HG and pulse rate of 69 per minute. And uh, we put a cannula at that point of tensor. And disability wise, GCS was full uh, with the pupil bilaterally equally reacting. And in exposure, temperature was 98.6 Fahrenheit with the GRBS of 140 milligram per deciliter. So coming to the uh, temperature, how much? Nine, uh, February, sir, 98.6. Mm. And the adjuncts to the primary survey, sir, uh, we took a V. So, this case can actually be taken to the green area, right? Yes, sir. Green Not area. to the yellow area. Mm. Yeah, we can be taken uh, as to. As per the triage. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, because uh, the history from the uh, triage people got, because he was having a history of like one week and he was hospitalized for about four So, you should be days. applying the triage sort mm, yes. criteria to uh, see whether the patient goes to the green bed, yellow bed or the red bed. Mm. Okay, apply that and take it accordingly. Mm. Yeah. So, we have completed your primary, primary survey. survey. Primary survey is clear. Now? Uh, adjuncts to the primary survey. Adjuncts, okay. Mm, here but uh, I think this this case, you can straight away go to the uh, secondary, secondary survey, survey yes. which comprises of the ample history, history as well as yeah, so, in a, uh, ample history, there was no any allergy history and there was no premier, uh, he was not having any comorbidities, was not on any medications. And the history is uh, like, uh, and last meal was about 4 hours before coming to our hospital. So, history is like this, he is a 54 year old male who, uh, who was admitted in an outside hospital with complaints of high grade fever with chills and rigor which had been last for, uh, which occurred about 7 days back and was there for about three days continuously. Uh, the fever was acute in onset, high grade, with the, uh, uh, which was uh, reducing on taking oral uh, antipyretics and also... Uh, so, the various headings, your, your chief complaint is fever. fever. So, in that case, you are supposed to go according to that odipara okay. approach. The onset, du onset of fever, duration, intensity, mm -hmm. progression, previous episodes, any aggravating factor, any relieving really factor, factor and then associated symptoms. So, what about the onset here? Sir, when it was an acute onset, the fever was when, acute onset, which was 7 days back. Okay, acute onset, 7 uh, days back. 7 days back, which uh, okay. um, onset, duration. Acute onset, is it, are you sure, is it, is it acute or acute gradual? Means, um, as patient told, uh, he, uh, he had high grade fever uh, within like uh, when he woke up, so, he started with high grade fever. So, apparently normal patient, one fine morning, he woke up with high grade fever. fever. Okay. So, uh, and as well, as for, the, for the last seven days, se seven days se back, it's seven days back, mm. and duration is three days, sir. Duration of what? Uh, the fever was uh, on and off for uh, three days, was take, reducing on taking medication, antipyretics. No, it's the total duration is seven days, right? Uh, seven days, days back, it occurred, sir, mm. which was for uh, three days. Seven days back, fever started, which was there for uh, the three days. Means it's on and off fever on for the last th seven days, but for the last three days, it's continuing. 
is it like that or no sir uh, it took it 7 days back and it was persisting on and off for the, uh, the next 3 days from from that point hmm. means it will be like 4 days back the fever stopped okay so the thing is the onset is you say you say it is acute hmm. onset maybe pro possible it's gradual hmm. gradual so 7 days its intensity is it uh, sir aff- affecting activities of daily living ah uh, sir yes sir uh, affecting activities of okay. daily living is on and off on and progression off. the progression is it progression, on and off uh, on and off and also aggravating uh, factor nothing aggravating factor uh, he was uh, already uh, uh, affecting his daily life for was not that much of moving during so that the point. the relieving factor is paracetamol uh, yeah antipyretics so on the doing any previous episode similar illness no sir means he was telling a history of fevers and all come uh, over the years but not that are significant and there are associated symptoms associated, associated with symptoms chills. you'll have to go systematically mm. okay starting system like, like you have got the eight systems right mm. the cns, CNS and musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal. You, you just club it to mm. together cns musculoskeletal cvs rs mm. together mm. git genital urinary mm. skin and miscellaneous. miscellaneous okay so what are the cns symptoms symptoms you'll ask i'm talking about the odipara mm. on the duration mm. intensity progression previous episodes aggravating relieving factor associated mm. symptoms under associated symptoms you have got mm. eight systems mm. the first system is cns and musculoskeletal mm. cns you'll be asking about what CNS. headache headache any vision blurring okay. any loss of consciousness any seizure like seizure episodes any mm. thing of that sort any vertigo okay any decreased sensorium any neck stiffness mm. so these are the things you generally ask any vision problem any hearing problem mm. these are all related to the cns things then uh musculoskeletal musculoskeletal what all things you ask uh, myalgia myalgia any body pain, body pain weakness weakness paralysis okay myalgia mm. knee pain mm. okay pain. any muscle pain mm. knee pain joint pain yeah mm. joint pain or any recent trauma got it no okay then so was, was there anything yes, of that sort yes was there then uh, he had complain of uh, myalgia also mm. with chills and rigor okay so fever headache myalgia mm. okay no joint pains no joint pain as okay yes i am more complaining of back pain and myalgia back pain back pain ah, back okay pain. all right then what the, uh, the cvs cvs rs what are the cvs uh, this thing this we will ask for uh, we can ask for any history of any chest pain palpitation any chest pain any palpitation any breathing difficulty oh. radiating pain dizziness sweating. any dizziness uh. okay sweating okay then rs uh, breathing difficulty any shortness of breath shortness. cough or wheezing hmm. that's what you ask then abdominal git git what all abdominal. things you ask any abdominal pain abdominal, abdominal discomfort pain, abdominal vomiting, swelling vomiting loose stools loose stools or constipation, constipation. then uh, urinary any go no, no. git spell. any change in stool color mm-hmm. or stool consistency mm-hmm. the, any change in the normal passage of the stools any blood is getting lost or anything mm-hmm. of that sort hematochesia mm-hmm. these kind of things then only the, you will be completing your git, GIT. aspect mm-hmm. then genital urinary uh, uh, urinary incontinence or uh, mid, okay. uh, any change frequency. in urine or mm-hmm. urination mm-hmm. any change in urine color quantity or in the pattern of urination any problem that comprises of all the uh, problems related to the genital urinary things mm. okay then any discharge mm. any penile or any vaginal or any this is a female patient male patient so you, any urethral discharge yes. abnormal discharge mm. or anything of that sort is there mm. or not any issues are there uh, as such uh, he was complaining GIT, 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 there was abdominal discomfort vomiting then he was also discomfort means you'll have to be like specific is it generalized discomfort generalized discomfort he was generalized discomfort and vomiting vomiting okay and uh, um, he was also complaining as for, for the last four days pre- uh, coming to before coming to hospital uh, not uh, decreased passage of oh, that is that will li- oh, yeah, yeah, stool uh, decreased passage of stools stool. 
ിംഗ് <laughs> Yeah, there, was, there was no rash or no, uh, no exposed to wound was there and the patient's uh, occupation history was he was a uh, that is later that is later no. then miscellaneous 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 means anything related to oncology related things mm. any loss of weight any loss of appetite for the last uh, because the oncology days, also cases uh, also come with similar fever kind of symptoms mm. need not necessarily be an infectious mm. cause mm. okay any loss of weight loss of appetite no no loss of any weight. swellings in the body any lumps or bumps suggest of any any lymph nodes in the body okay even before you examine the case patient will say i've got a lymph node here mm mm so you'll, it is much much more easier when you examine any evening rise of temperature mm anything nothing no, no evening but uh, as uh, he was having loss of appetite for the 7 days loss of appetite so at the end of the hopc you have got fever body pain body pain chills rigor headache chills rigor, uh, vomiting headache, uh, back pain vomiting back pain uh, abdominal discomfort abdominal discomfort okay all right then the sir uh, work related he was a uh, bakery then it goes you will have to go for the past passes medical history there was no significant uh, medical history other than, uh, sir no history of any co- no comorbidities no comorbidities mm. no diabetes no hypertension no, yeah. nothing is there okay uh, is he on no or not on any drugs not also not on any drugs he was a bakery worker okay was he did he meet any other doctor like in the research yeah, for sir. the same uh, thing history is that uh, he went to uh, for the same he went to a nearby hospital which uh, four days before coming to our hospital mm-hmm. and there in which uh, he, he was found to have uh, low platelet count oh ah. platelet count uh, dropped up to uh, from the history he was telling we, we don't have much of documents uh, platelet count dropped up to 22000 hemodynamically he was stable, stable at that point of time yes. only only the problem is was wasn't platelet count mm. Uh, fever was there and platelet count was 22000 and uh, he was telling that platelet transfusion was done mm. and uh, he was given uh, antibiotics crystalline penicillin and uh, uh, on further evaluation he was so at that point right now you are thinking about fever with thrombocytopenia uh, so what are your dds right now uh, any viral fever can cause uh, fever with thrombocytopenia uh, like dengue chikungunya or mm. viral hemorrhage other viral hemorrhagic fevers lepto lepto sclerosis mm. then mm. then uh, he other any uh, other than viral fever we can also have uh, malignancies also can have uh, thrombocytopenia then bacterial infection like typhoid also can have thrombocytopenia sepsis also can present like uh, thrombocytopenia fever thrombocytopenia so when are you going to transfuse platelet so uh, transfusion of platelet depend upon uh, whether the patients how is the total patient's condition and how is there any bleeding manifestation if there is bleeding manifestation uh, with the platelet count uh, less than 10000 we can directly go transfuse, transfuse with the platelet sir or else if you are uh, going with any when a surgical intervention is needed uh, in major surgeries if the platelet count is less than 1 lakh we can transfuse in case of any lumbar puncture or uh other things we can transfuse if the platelet count is less than 50000 and uh, here he also had he was telling that he was also had uh, um, from the papers he was uh, we got uh, he was also having derived lft and rft 
so he was referred to our hospital for further evaluation and management so fever with thrombocytopenia affecting kidney as well as the liver liver so uh, on reaching our hospital it's a seven so, okay so uh, okay tell me seven days was over so in uh, uh, we okay, have so for right now that, that will, will deal so hopc is over past medical history you told nothing is there mm. not on any medication medications only that antibiotic was started ah. from the before that he wasn't on any medication, medication at mm. all okay and also no rigidity stiffness nothing was no, there right no sir no sir okay past surgical history no past surgical history. any allergy no allergy history family history any similar problem no sir no no, no family history any significant any similar fever kind of things history of fever over the years has been there but uh, no one uh, like recently like recent similar history. similar kind of things no sir no any recent uh, what what is he doing right now uh, sir uh, bakery uh, baker the social the social se- social sexual and travel history baker bakery uh, baker okay and uh, no staying with staying with family but uh, on evaluation of any chance of difference in diagnosis with lepto uh, we inquired about whether he was working any uh, contaminated environment including uh, rats or any history of any farm farm cultivation or any pineapple farm like that but uh, um, there was uh, he was giving a negative history for the same also normally leptospirosis you get con- uh, walking in contaminated mm. ponds if you have a exposed wound mm. and all okay travel history any uh, any he travel was, uh, only inside kerala he was traveling for like uh, mostly inside ernakulam only so as uh, traveling to make baker items or or the same district only immunized is he immunized i uh, immunized completely yes ah, covid vaccination also taken so at this point you can't say it's leptospirosis because that predisposing things are not there hmm the wound and no hmm, that was not there uh, that wasn't there hmm. only only thing which favor favors is the fever thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopenia and involvement of liver yeah, as well as liver the kidney, kidney that's all yeah so predisposing thing is not there hmm, not there okay then so uh and uh, so differential diagnosis uh, included dengue fever then also uh, leptospirosis and Any mosquitoes and uh, where is he staying uh, he was staying with this in home more uh, home where was the he was telling there was mosquitoes but not that much of uh, amount hmm. so de- dengue lepto and uh, other uh, fevers uh, differential diagnosis viral fevers so we sent for dengue uh, and uh, uh, dengue igm igg and also Uh, we send for lepto igm as seven days was over we could send for lepto igm lepto igm can be sent only after seven days uh, which will be positive mm. so dengue what in the initial initial first first, first uh, initial uh, uh, non immune uh, anitrix phase we can send for uh, there are two phases of two phases uh, leptospirosis uh, okay so initial non immune or uh, uh, anitrix phase we can send for uh, pcr or dag field microscopy to look for any leptospira infection mm. whereas in uh, post uh, in immune phase or ectric phase we can uh, go with lepto igm uh, to diagnose the leptospirosis sir okay so this is after, after presentation seven, is after 7 days 7 days seven you days. send the other one which one, which one did you send lepto igm sir okay uh, after 7 days it came out to be positive ha uh, it came out to be positive sir uh, dengue was negative igm was negative okay so uh, Any, any other evaluation any ultrasound scanning uh, uh, outside they had done uh, ultrasound abdomen which was showing mild hepatomegaly with um, both kidney enlarged with uh, enlarged with maintained cmd bulky kidney no splenomegaly no splenomegaly or we also uh, did a uh, uh, usd from our uh, hospital uh, shows borderline hepatomegaly with altered echo tester and bilateral kidney as were bulky with uh, decreased cortical echogenesis and the main dense cmd okay what about about the lab values in hemoglobin cbc so uh, yes. initially we sent for the uh, routine lab investigation his uh, total counts were uh, 9000 with uh, 
സി ആർ പി ഓഫ് എയ്റ്റി സിക്സ് പ്രൊക്കാൽ വാസ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ത്രീ സിക്സ് ആൻഡ് യൂറിയ വാസ് എയ്റ്റി ഫോർ വിത്ത് ക്രിയാറ്റിൻ ഓഫ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് എയ്റ്റ് നയൻ സിക്സ് Okay, this is here here our our value here lft is not that altered. Uh, not that altered uh, their altered but we, our lft was not that much altered but his uh, total bilirubin was 11.94 with the direct uh, bilirubin of 8.97 that was the range sir mm-hmm. hemodynamically is stable hemodynamically he was stable as far as the emergency physicians perspective you have nothing much to do here because hemodynamically he is stable. stable you don't need to initiate the sepsis protocol or anything surviving mm-hmm. sepsis you need to don't need to just start on uh, like iv fluids send all the baseline investigations which have left to igm mm-hmm. and start on an appropriate antibiotic uh, antibiotic like what doxy or mm-hmm. here we usually go with doxycycline as a mm-hmm. treatment of fraction of water mm-hmm. what other uh, this thing <coughs> So, uh, and uh, from uh, we started with doxycycline injection doxycycline sir uh, so after uh, we got that result after one day of admission dengue igm uh, sorry sir lepto igm and uh, his symptoms be- uh, be- became we began to improve and uh, his uh, urine creatinine also uh, began to decrease and uh, i left the values also became normal it's really supportive care supportive nothing, care nothing also. supporting her iv fluids and uh, doxycycline as well can actually i think he can be managed in the ward itself mm, yes. by the general medicine mm, mm. Uh, department mm. and uh, he became improved and we discharged the patient sir okay so from the emergency physician's perspective this is uh, considerably like, yeah. like, uh, nothing much to do about it mm, mm. just symptomatic supportive care and the patient will improve mm. Okay, okay. Okay. okay.